What is clinical spinal instability? Well, the first thing to know about it is that you can, it can either be called spinal instability or clinical spinal instability. They all mean the same. The contemporary term was coined by Punjabi and White or you know, brought to the forefront by Punjabi and White. However, the idea of spinal instability has been around for a very long time. As a matter of fact, um, 1700 BC was the first original writings of the differentiation between a sprain, a fracture, and a dislocation of the spine. So it's been around for a long time. But uh, the nice thing is in the clinical instability and low back pain by Manohar Banjabi, uh, in this journal writing, he basically just described it very easily. And he said, clinical instability is an important cause of low back pain. Although there is some controversy concerning its definition, it is most widely believed that the loss of normal pattern of spinal motion causes pain and neurological dysfunction. So when we have a subluxation of uh, abnormal spinal motion, it can cause nerve interference and it can cause pain, and that's what spinal instability is. So White and Pajabi went on to explain in their clinical biomechanics of the spine, in more technical terms, they said clinical instability is the loss of the ability of spine on our physiological loads to maintain its patterns of displacement so that there's no initial or additional neurological deficit, no matter of major deformity, and no incapacitating pain. So again, it's abnormal spinal motion, abnormal spinal position, causing pressure on the nerve. Now it can also cause pressure on the cord, and that's what it is. They go on in the same book to say that the major practical consideration in the, in the determination of clinical instability is the evaluation of the patient's radiographs. Radiographic examination is the most often used objective means of determining the relative positions of the vertebra in a potentially unstable spine. Therefore, it is important to give some consideration to the accurate interpretation of linear radiographic measurements. So we see that spinal instability really is uh, as we talked about earlier in an earlier video, it is identical to the definition of a spinal subluxation used by the chiropractic profession uh, for over 100 years. So let's look at these clinical instabilities now. Let's take a look at, at me explaining it with a drawing. Okay, when we're talking about clinical spinal instability, this can occur actually from a spinal sprain, which is a ligament injury, which includes the disc injury, a spinal fracture, which is quite apparent in what that means, and a spinal dislocation can all cause clinical spinal instability. Now, the majority of chronic clinical instability that most clinicians experience is from the spinal sprain. And in the spinal sprain scenario, what we see here in the spinal column is you'll actually see these these vertebral bodies and the the uh, you know the vertebral borders of them actually now will offset and these offsets can be measured on x-ray now these offsets can be the form of what are called abnormal translation patterns or abnormal angular patterns now what occurs with this is let's pick a different color. We of course we know that we have this spinal cord that's coming down through the spinal canal. Now we also have the spinal nerve which is in between you know each one of these holes so if we removed this now and we just chose this hole, which we see that this hole right here, right here, and let's go a little bit larger, we would actually have a nerve coming out. And that nerve is coming out to do a number of different things. But the basic nerve itself is involved with motor, sensory, and visceral control. Motor is obviously the movement of anything. Sensory is obviously the sense or sensory system so the body can sense what it needs, what each part needs, uh, where each part is. Very, very important to the body. 
and of course visceral is all the body organs. So that's what this nerve is going out to do. Now, when we have excessive abnormal motion, which is what we normally have with spinal instability, um, you just like you see here, you have all, this is very inflamed, just like this image now shows. This becomes very inflamed, and if it becomes inflamed and in any of that inflammation, or if the actual position of the vertebra compress upon the spine, then we have decreased spinal nerve transmissions. You know, transmissions going out in the form of motor transmissions, and transmissions coming in in the form of sensory transmissions. And this, of course, would cause problems with the body's neurological system. Now, when we have this discoordination in the system, we also usually have a discoordination in the body muscular system that helps to establish or stabilize the uh, spinal motion unit. So anytime that we have these displacements measured on x-rays, and we have any kind of testing finding that finds that there's a motor, sensory, or an actual pain problem associated with this area, we call it a clinical spinal instability.